Casey's Ice Cream Parlour, the Sweet Valley Twins Recap Podcast. My name is Paula and I'm here with Rich. Hello. This fortnight we have read, unfortunately. What do you mean, unfortunately? <laughs> Keeping Secrets. This book, book number 12. Is, this might not be a, a, a great secret or a great book, but it was hilarious. Well, not everyone agreed with that. Um, comments we had when I posted it on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Rebecca Sturgis said, I hated this book. <laughs> it was actually the first Sweet Valley Twins book I ever read. Why I carried on with them is beyond me. Oh, but they do get good, though. Leslie Ann Lupton said this has to be the, the worst book ever. Oh, my goodness. Um, Knee Deep in the 90s, though, said they used to speak, I think, to their friends. Oh, my. Um, And... Rosie Jane Austen said she read this book and she loved it. Oh, well, there we go. Um, and Nostalgia Art, Art, Nostalgia Art by Hera said, I felt so bad for Ned. He trusted them and it was supposed to be their thing and Jessica blew it in a matter of hours. And Ned overreacts I, Yeah, I disagree with that. Yeah. <clears throat> I think Ned overreacted. Um, SV and BSC Bookworm said, not a favourite of mine. Okay. I, I wouldn't. Oh, no, it's not a favourite of mine, for sure. And that it should have been a B-plot in a book. Yeah. Uh, but Gem Loves Books said the twins lo- look so pretty on the cover. They do, actually. Yeah. So speaking of the cover... I My favourite bit is in the back of this cover, as, as you know. The, no, 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 the, the background of the picture. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> we've it's a lovely pink colour. It's my favourite colour we've had so far on the twins' books. Pink and yellow. It's yeah. our logo, isn't it? It, it is our logo, our, um, actually. Yeah. podcast logo is, this, uh, is in these colours. And it says, Will Jessica and Elizabeth both break their promises? Well, they indeed. So we've got the twins. We, we're we assuming that this is in Guido's. Yes, I'm assuming from the stereotypical table <clears throat> covers that it's an Italian restaurant. Yeah, it's got like the red and white check table co- yeah. covers. And um, the twins are like whispering something and then they're... <laughs> <laughs> then, I, I sent you a photo of this because I was like, have you in. seen who's in the background of this so picture? We're assuming this is Caroline in the background of the picture. I thought it was Amy. But yeah, you say Caroline because it makes sense in the scene it is Caroline. Yes, so. and she's got slightly reddish hair uh, and she's like spying on them in the background and she looks gormless as hell. She is the most gormless <laughs> uh, is the most gormless person I've seen on a Sweet Valley cover <laughs> yeah. like, to date. Like, check this out on our social media or, or Google it and just look at Caroline's I'll face. post an extreme close-up later. Yeah, love an extreme close-up. Um, and then on the back it says, Breaking Promises. Jessica and Elizabeth Wakefield's father teaches them a secret language called the Ithig. All their friends want to know the secret too, but the twins have made a pact with their father not to give it away. Elizabeth, at least, intends to keep her promise, but Jessica can't help herself. She teaches her best friend Lila Fowler the secret language. That means that soon the whole school will know I think. Oh, no. Let me just say up There's front. There's more. Go oh, on. go on. Now the class decides to use the language against the one teacher they don't like, Mrs. McDonald. They will speak only I think in class the day the school supervisor comes in to review her. At first, Elizabeth is angry with Jessica for breaking her promise about I think, But now Elizabeth wonders, should she break her own promise and warn Miss McDonald? Well, let me say up front, Jessica's the only sensible person in this entire book. I completely agree. Like, so I'm I'm team Jessica all the way in this one. Yeah, so we're about to tell you why. Yes. This might be quite a short episode because... Because there's not much that happens? <laughs> yeah. Like, barely anything? So we open in the Wakefield Spanish Child Kitchen where the twins are still wondering what Ned's big secret is. So, to, to recap, in the last book... Every chapter or so, Ned walks in the room and he's like, I've got such a big secret to <laughs> yeah. tell you girls. You're not going to believe it. You're going to like, it's going to blow your fucking minds. Yeah. But I can't tell you now. It has to be the right time. I have to wait for the right time. Um, <laughs> and as we open this book, Jessica, I mean, Liz is trying to work because she's boring. Jessica sat there and she's like, maybe it's a trip to Europe. Maybe he's got us that boat we've been asking for. Mm. Or maybe we've got a long lost triplet, and Elizabeth says that will surprise Brooke. Yeah, it's Jennifer. They, they joke about real. Jennifer. Yeah. Um, there's been way too much of a build up for this secret. Uh, yeah, there there has been quite a lot. <clears throat> um, Elizabeth notices Jessica's wearing her hair clip, but she says she can keep it because it looks better on her. And then we get the usual joke about how they look exactly the same. Yeah. Yep. 
leading into how Liz is four minutes older. And then Jessica opens the fridge and she's shocked to find a huge plate of brownies. Yes, she comments that, you know, Stephen must not have uh, come home yet because, mm. you know, there's there's food in the fridge. Um, and then Liz reminds her not to spoil her appetite as Ned is going to take them for pizza because Alice is at work. And then Liz suggests, Liz suggests they make dinner to surprise Ned. Yeah. I, it's like he can't cook for his own family. But it's also, like if Alice is at work, either the kids have got to make the dinner or we're, go, we're going out. Or we're going out, like, yeah. Like Ned but, can't possibly make it. But what kind of kid does this? <clears throat> You've just yes. been told you're going out for pizza and Liz is like, let's cook. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Liz? Yeah. And Jessica, like a normal child or even just a normal human being, yeah. it's like... Uh, I want to go for pizza. Wait, she's like, she's <laughs> like. There's two problems with this, Liz. A, we're going out for pizza, and B, we don't know how to cook. Yeah, they say they say they can cook spaghetti and salad. Well, Liz does. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Jess is capable of that. Now we all know that Ned, master of salad. Yeah, you can't cook a salad for Ned. <laughs> no, he'd be very critical of your book. salad. Um, and then they suddenly freeze in terror. They hear footsteps in the basement. But it's only Stephen. Yeah, he's been in all along. This was weird. That it was like a it was like a, a paragraph from one of the like chillers or something. <laughs> it was like all of a sudden there's like noise in the basement. Yeah. And they're terrified. It's just Stephen. Um, and then he's just been down there doing his laundry, and they joked that they didn't know that he knew how to work the washing machine. And they ask him why he hasn't raided the fridge. And he says, well, I'm off to the dairy burger. I'm saving my appetite. He's going to see some friends. So I can get two cheeseburgers and two shakes. Yeah, Jess is disgusted by this. Uh, and he's been doing his laundry because Alice has been so busy at work lately. Yeah, the house is falling apart without Alice. They're going out for meals every night. They're, yeah. you know. Uh, the twins are impressed until he tells them that he put his sneakers in with his clothes. Yeah, and Liz just moron. laughs at him, and it's like you're, they're meant to go in separately. Um, I didn't know that. And Stephen, Stephen's like, I don't, uh, there, I don't need to ask for your advice. I know what I'm doing. And then he runs <laughs> downstairs because he's obviously panicking. They act like he's done the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it'd be that big of a deal to no. be honest with you. So Ned comes home. He's looking like an adult version of Stephen with his rugged, tanned face. Now, what are we told Ned looks like during these books usually? athletic oh no hang on yeah you're right don't worry forget it <laughs> what were you gonna say i i thought he i thought they called him uh uh an older robert red a young robert redford but that's oh not my that's, God, that's, that's mr, mr. Collins. collins um because i was gonna say would that make Stephen then just robert redford but, how yeah. could you my bad sorry i forgot i corrected myself yeah. i just i just then outed myself afterwards so Ned's taking them to Guido's to tell them this big secret. Oh my god! It's a huge point of how important it is that they don't tell anybody. They take it to the grave. Yeah, Liz uh, is confided in <clears throat> by Jess. Jess tells her, oh, "I've eaten way too much pizza lately," and Liz says, "Well, it's your own fault for not bringing packed lunch and instead eating those, you know, cafeteria pizzas in school." I love cafeteria like, pizzas Liz. in school cafeteria pizzas are the best pizzas now i don't know if you guys in uh canada or america have these but the square pizzas that we used to get in school best pizzas ever i still think about that taste yeah and they cost like 35p yeah i'm sure they were terrible for you but you know they were cool no well they're not good enough for elizabeth wakefield apparently not and then we get this other weird bit. Jess, Jess says to Liz, it's not every day a handsome man wants to take her to dinner. They like, talk about their father in weird. some disturbing ways. I know. Yeah. So Jessica takes ages to get ready and she settles on a light blue sundress with a purple belt to represent the unicorns. Of course, you, you have to represent. <clears throat> and then that builds into a paragraph on how much Elizabeth hates the unicorns. Yes, uh, she goes into how much she despises the unicorns and wants nothing to do with them again. Um, but the snob squad. The snob squad, As yeah. But like now, isn't like her her best friend is like somewhat related to the unicorns now? Like she's in the boosters, Amy. Like <laughs> she's practically a unicorn. She hangs around with a lot of them. Like Ellen's been nice to Liz. Like the, like some of the some of the unicorns are nice, including her sister. Hmm. But Liz is still like, ah, oh, snob squad, hate them. And then we get to Guido's. Ned tells them that the secret is older than they are. Oh my god, what could it be? And then he says, actually, we've had a request for you to read out the Ithig. Do you want so, me to um, try? I can try. Go ahead. Oh, great. 
I actually purposely didn't write down any of it in my notes so that I could read my notes. So, uh, first of all, it should be pointed out that, as usual, Jessica says that if they don't, if he, she doesn't tell him, she will die. <laughs> she will literally die. Uh, but yes, Mr. Wakefield joked. Then he grew serious. I think I <laughs> think, 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 I can't do it. Oh, I, I it literally cannot do it. Sorry, Waterware. <laughs> I tried. All right, come on. I'll try again. I'll try again. I'll try it again. <laughs> you, you can't let you can't let water ride down. She messaged me and I'm asked doing this for you, if you water could read this. Right, I'm doing this for you. I think I th- think <laughs> <laughs> the thing is we think ill <laughs> kithig om om c- oh come that's meant to be come. C- Kith- do you are you supposed to keep oh. the original word while you do you know what I mean like the yeah. pronunciation of the original yeah. word doesn't work at all. <laughs> Kithigom, <laughs> Ithigus, Ithiga. Oh my! What is that this last clip's word? This going up online. Ithiga. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not cutting this. This is staying in. <laughs> This is this is what people listen to this. No, I mean for. this is po- going to be posted online. Oh, I know. As a highlight. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ithiga. 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 Right. And then Liz says, "Huh." Ned and I says, agree. "I the guy, sith the gink, sith the gis, with the girl, sith the gum." Ithagas, Ithaga, Sitcher, Prithagas. Easy. Well, when you say it like that, it sounds easy. But yeah. You you had pr- you had time to listen to me and learn it. Sure. Yeah. So basically, in English, that is. I think this will come as a surprise. I think it will come as a disappointing surprise. Yeah, Jessica's underwhelmed. Can you blame her? As are we. She was, yeah, I mean, like, bear, like imagine. <clears throat> she wanted to go to Europe. <laughs> yeah, or have a boat. I mean, imagine your parents going on at you, or like, you know, your dad, okay, it's just, just your dad goes on at you for like i don't know what is it like a week he's like i've got something mm. really big to tell you really big secret really big surprise you'd be thinking it was something amazing and then it's this yeah i mean come on but liz is really into it oh of course she is because she like, loves language she's like oh how long will it take us to learn and he says by the time that they go to bed they'll be fluent in it and then he tells them the story of Ithig. oh the, I, I love this the, <clears throat> the story of billy fantana yeah he learned it from his school friend, Billy Fantana, who learned it from his father. Um, Jessica starts rolling her eyes. Yeah, I don't blame her. And uh, Ned says, Jythigas, Ithiga, Withagants, Ithig to Lythigurn, Zithigis, Lythangythigwidge. This is tremendous entertainment. I know. <laughs> this is what you tune in to this podcast for. Um, and uh, then he explains Ithig. Yes. So the idea is, are you going to read the actual passage? Or, uh, yeah, yeah. So basically, um, he says, the fir- first, each syllable, of a wo- each syllable of a word has its own Ithig. Or is it Ithig? I don't know. Yeah, we might have screwed this up. I think we've been saying I think the whole time because I think we just called it that and yeah. that's kind of stuck like iPhone. So that is if you, you You could reinvent this language just putting iPhone in instead. <laughs> yeah. That's the modern version of this book. <laughs> so you simply insert an I thig slash ithig mm-hmm. inside each syllable. For example, let's take the word twin. In I thig, it would be twice again. Now you try it. How would you say the word girl in I thig? And like Keen or Liz is like, I know, I know. It would be guy the girl. And well Liz's like, done, very Liz. good. You got that one syllable word right. Um, yeah, even, even Rich could get Even that. I could figure that one out. But words of two letters or less, like I, it, and am, start with I think. So I think I, I think it, I think am, and so on. Mm-hmm. And that is the secret. Oh, boy. So I, I love this bit. Um, so, you know, Jess is struggling to pick up the language. Um, Liz has got it. And 
she she then 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 Jess tries to say Caroline Pierce is over there and I think and she just fucks it right up she fucks it right <laughs> up but Liz and Ned are like oh well well done but you said this bit wrong and you did this bit wrong wrong and you know you need to say it like this and then Jess is like yeah but Caroline Pierce is actually over there coming over <laughs> like, like, like legitimately she's coming over now hide yeah um and Caroline's overheard them babbling on and she wants to know what's going on as usual and Ned is just like really protective. It's really weird. She comes over and she's like, something strange was going on over here. Yeah. And Jess tells her that they're speaking a secret language. And Ned is like, this is a family matter, Caroline. <laughs> Get out, Caroline. <laughs> yeah. It's like really over the top. And he's really angry at Jessica. Yeah, he is. He, he is way overprotective of <clears throat> Billy Fontana's memory and, <laughs> and this, this language. Um, I, I like that um, that Liz is like, surely your family must have secrets. And Caroline's like, no, we don't Not have like this. anything like this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> she basically makes the whole thing seem really, really stupid in about which one sentence. Is. Yeah, which it is. But I love she does it in front of the table. She's yeah. just like, this is basically the worst thing I've ever heard. Gormless Caroline. Gormless Caroline, which we'll send a photo of later. <laughs> the next day at breakfast, Jessica is painting her nails pink with purple stripes. And apparently Elizabeth finds this ridiculous but fascinating. Stephen thinks it looks like she's got her fingers trapped in the door. Mm. Jess starts speaking in Ithig and Ned shushes her and reminds her that it's a secret. Yeah, Stephen just says, this family's getting weirder by the day and just kind of rolls his eyes. Correct. So Alice comes down and uh, Jessica speaks to her in Ithig too. Yeah, and Alice is like, is this that dumb language that my husband speaks? And Elizabeth's like, this is a secret. And it says that Elizabeth tries to let Alice down gently when she tells her she's not allowed to know. know. I'm sure Alice really cares. Alice's response makes it clear that she does not give a shit. Yeah. She's just like, yeah, I I understand. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like, I've no interest. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that learning I think will really help me in my career (laughs) in design. design. Yeah. And then all the way to school, Jessica carries on babbling. And Liz is carrying her books because her nails are drying. <laughs> and then um, Amy overhears them. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to say as well, Alice sees Jess's nails and she's like, wow, I've never seen anything quite like that before. So I'm assuming these nails are a hideous mess. Hmm. And then um, Amy overhears them speaking, oh, I think. God, Amy. And um, she's like what's going on and elizabeth's like oh jessica's just messing around but amy says i thought i heard jessica saying something weird and then jessica snaps well you didn't (laughs) she's like now now she's overprotective of the language and amy says there's no need to get nasty and she runs away and then jess jess turns to liz and is like hey are you proud of me i didn't give up the language and liz is like but you were horrible to my friend yeah and then when they get to school, it turns out that, of course, Jungle Drums Caroline has already told everybody that the twins have a secret language. Of course. This so in the gate. The year. Yeah. At the gate, Lila approaches. Oh, and, my God. Uh, I love this She bit. says, we need to talk. It says she hisses I know. at Jess. That it's a huge insult to the unicorns. I feel like... Caroline knew. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine <clears> the insult? <throat> I, I feel like that the words that like are most associated with Lila is hissing and mm-hmm. flashing eyes. Yeah. So I want to read this this uh, description of Lila. Oh, go it was on. My, my favorite bit. Mm-hmm. It says, she sounded angrier with each word she spoke. Her brown eyes looked like they, like they were on fire. <laughs> it's like Jesus Christ, calm down. Oh well, yeah, it's a big <laughs> insult to the unicorns. You know, you told Caroline Pierce. Yeah, Janet and Ellen come over and get involved as well. I like that uh, initially. You know, the group the group gathers and Jess is like, oh, "Oh, Caroline's just full of shit. She always she's always like this. She's always making stuff up." Um, but then then like Lila, I think is just staring at her with her burning brown eyes and it's like <laughs> really and then Jess is I just like imagine her going no. redder and redder yeah she's going, to she's going really red and then Jess is like well sort of she kind of starts to crack yeah and then Elizabeth comes over and rushes to Jess's defense and she explains that Ned made them promise not to tell anyone <clears throat> but then tragedy strikes Liz looks around and she sees on a nearby bench, Amy staring at them mm. with her lips trembling. Yeah. 
Amy runs off angrily. <laughs> and uh, Elizabeth chases her and Amy says, you lied to me, Elizabeth. <laughs> And she's actually in tears. Yeah, I know. She's so upset. I <laughs> laughed when I read this because I couldn't believe how upset Amy was getting. She is so upset, yeah. this whole book about this. And then they're saved by the bell. So Elizabeth promises Amy that they'll talk later. Yeah, I like that. Like, I mean, this is a ridiculous situation. Okay, this is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. But Liz has seen that her friend is really upset. And she's going to try and put it right and try and sort things out with her friend. But then the school bell rings and Liz is like, oh, well, see you later. Oh, she can't be late for her class. No, no. It's like, oh, no, I couldn't possibly be a second late for my class to help my friend and sort things out with my friend. Hmm. No, no, you'll have to wait until after school. Well, she only has to wait until lunchtime because at lunchtime, Elizabeth apologizes to her. Um, But Amy just presses her to say something to her in the language. She's like, just say something in Ithig. Yeah, she's like, oh. And And then Liz is like, write something down. Then write it down. (laughs) And Elizabeth says, why are you making such a big deal out of this? I love and she this. Says, she goes mental. Yeah, she says, why? I'll tell you why. <laughs> and she says, we're supposed to be best friends and best friends don't have secrets. I think you already have a best friend and her name is Jessica. Yeah, and Liz is like, actually, I've got two best friends. Yeah. And Amy says, well, now you only have one. And then she storms off. Mm. And Elizabeth heads out for some air and she overhears Lila shouting at Jessica on the stairs saying if she doesn't tell her the secret, she will never, ever speak to her again. Now, I I will say this is very in character for Lila. This didn't shock me at all. (laughs) Like it shocked Amy's behaviour. It is ridiculous though. It is, but then that's Lila. Yeah, I can imagine Amy being like, you know, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Stringy haired Amy would not have cared. I feel like we're in a transitional period of Amy here. (laughs) because she was awful in the last book as well let's not forget what did she do in the last book well i think the last book canonically the valentine oh yeah yeah. was um the one when she got really funny about the the campaign and the posters and (laughs) ken she was horrible to ken and everyone she got jealous this is like the second book now where she's had to ultimately apologize to liz for being an absolute bitch i don't yeah i don't think she's a bitch i just think she's highly Over strong top, she's yeah. got a problem maybe yeah she's you know she's going through puberty maybe she's <laughs> she was a bitch to ken in the last one though yeah that, that was that was nasty you don't don't be nasty to little ken so jessica's sobbing and uh liz and jess decide to go back into the cafeteria together solidarity and yeah so of course jess doesn't have her food so they have to queue um they have to queue for her square pizza hopefully mm. uh and and while queuing they notice that not only Caroline, but also Amy sat with the unicorns. Yeah. Jessica's angry at this. So she tries to wind them all up by lively talking to Liz and Ithig. Yeah, and they make a point of saying that Lila pays no attention yeah. to her. Liz won't play along either, and every all the unicorns just ignore her. Oh my god. So she just storms right over to them. And she asks how long they're going to keep this up. And Lila says, until you tell us the language. My goodness. So later, Liz is at the locker, her locker, and uh, she sees Amy. And uh, she says, hey, Amy, do you want to come over tonight? And Amy's like, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, what about tomorrow? I'm busy then too. And um, Liz is like, "Eh, I think you're taking this a bit far, Amy. And then Lila turns up. Yes, Lila loudly asks Amy to a benefit party that her dad is holding for the hospital. Now, I like to think, because we're about to hear how extravagant this party is, I like to think that Lila has somehow conned her dad into organising this entire goddamn thing (laughs) just to get back at Liz and Jess. Yeah. (laughs) So at this party, Amy's favourite tennis player, Chris Crosby, is going to be there. So yeah. Amy's very excited. Amy's blown away. She's like, oh my God, I can't wait. And then they link arms as they walk away. Yeah, and Lila lively says, the twins aren't invited because they won't share their secret. Oh my goodness. And Lila's been bragging about the party in front of Jessica as well. Yeah, she's so outside. Jessica knows all about all it. All upset. Yeah, so the twins glumly walk home together and they say they wish they'd never heard of Ithig. They, so do I. Yeah, so do so do <laughs> we. So do we. And we read 105 pages of it. But it gets um, worse at home, doesn't it? Oh, it does. But before they get there, they also hear Lila shouting to Amy, this is going to be the best party ever. 
the twins will turn absolutely green. <laughs> so it gets worse at home when Stephen tells them <laughs> he's, that been, he's invited. been invited to the party. Lila has invited every single human on the planet yeah. except for the twins. He says Lila probably wanted some older men there for decoration. For decoration. Okay, Steve, sure. I wouldn't want to go to any party where I was known as a decoration, no. Stephen. Also, he's he's not a man. No, he's not. He is still a, a child. Year old Very boy. much a child. He also breaks the news that Jessica's favourite soap star, Brett Carter, is going to be in attendance. Oh my goodness. And Jessica runs upstairs crying. Yeah. <laughs> we cut to a Sixers meeting. Amy's told Mr. Bowman that they should do an article about the party. Yeah. Um, and he, he says, who's going to this party? And every single person puts their hand up apart from Elizabeth. Even Mr. Bowman's like, yeah, I'm going, actually. Yeah, yeah they're all fucking <laughs> actually, going. Invited too. The whole town's going. <laughs> Mr. Garvin's just had a child. He's coming. Yeah. So she selflessly says that Amy should write the article because she knows a lot about tennis. Yeah, Liz being selfless. And Amy thanks her, but still will not look at her. No, no, she's like, thanks, but not making eye contact yeah. whatsoever. On the way out, Elizabeth hears voices coming from the music room. Oh and my. her first thought is like, some some kids are having a causing chaos and they're having a party. I'm going to snitch on them. Yeah, I'm going to snitch, yeah. And she, she, so she walks in and she finds some teachers in there. Yeah, they're all having some... Uh, well, it says orange juice, doesn't it? I, I think there might be some some I think prosecco. They give what champagne in there as well. They said. they might have yeah. I think they've got champagne, but they offer Liz orange yes. juice, don't they? I guess. Um, yeah, Mister Garvin um, is uh, having a toast that is. to his new baby. It's funny, isn't it? Because I've never heard of Mister Garvin until he was leaving, and we know from the flash forward book that we did <clears throat> the the Christmas special that Mrs. McDonald definitely hangs around. So do I, we? Oh yeah, she's. So I guess the, Mr. Garvin yeah. just never comes back. I don't know. Maybe don't blame him. No, I don't blame him. So they give Elizabeth some orange juice, and she joins them in a toast. It makes her feel a little bit better. Until she gets home, and she finds a letter addressed to her. Yes, it's sitting on the table. It's from Lila. The letter says. So, do you want to read this letter? Or shall I? Do you really want me to try? Because I will. Go on then. Oh, goodness. The, the, it's written the, in, I think. The clips the for language. this episode is just going to be me trying to do <laughs> this. The letter says... Well, she sees it's from Lila and she opens it excitedly. And it reads... Dear I think girl... Le- <laughs> <laughs> Le- I think... I think... Beth- I think... Uh, <laughs> we should have practiced this. Yeah, I think you. I think er. Uh, inviting. To. I think. D- <laughs> I think to. I think a. Uh, T. I think. T. I think. Guinness. I think is. Pithig. Garth. I thiggy. <laughs> Lila's written in I think. And in English that is. Dear Elizabeth, you are invited Um I can't even read it in English. To, you are to, invited to a tennis party. Yeah. And it went on to give the time and date of the founder's tennis benefit and was signed by Lila. How the fuck does Lila know I think? Oh, I wonder how she could possibly have worked that out. Liz realises that Jessica must have told her. So she goes up to Jessica's room, waving the letter around, like, what is this? She is, like, seething. And she makes out that, like, Jessica has betrayed the family. Yeah, she does. She says uh, she calls her Miss Benedict Arnold Wakefield again. Yeah, she does. We really need to find out who the hell that is. Mm. I'm going to look it up right now. Because they say it in like almost every book. Alexa, Benedict Arnold. Who's Benedict Arnold? <laughs> According to Wikipedia, this monument was erected under the patronage of the state of Connecticut in the 50s. Right. Uh, Alexa doesn't know. He was an American military officer who served during the Revolutionary War. Okay, so I guess he betrayed someone. Surprised the twins know so much about history. <laughs> My God, Alexa's still going on about him. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know if this is being picked up <laughs> Alexa, on the podcast. Alexa, stop. <laughs> so, um, um, where are we? Yeah, so just because, like, look, like, the whole school is, like, a whole class is turning against yeah, us. Yeah, like, Jessica's so like, is this something? a dumb language? Like, wh- why are you making such a big deal out of it? And Liz is, like, incensed by this. She feels, hmm. like, personally betrayed. Yeah, and Elizabeth says, you just wanted to go to the party. It's like, well, yeah, she Well, it's not did. just yeah. that, though, well, is it? Like, none of her friends are talking to her. No. Like, the whole school is pretty much, like, turning on them over this yeah. goddamn thing. <laughs> and Jessica says, you broke a promise. And then Ned comes upstairs and finds Jessica crying. Yeah, and he's like, hey, you know, can I help? Maybe I can help. What's wrong? So she tells him what happens, what's happened. And yeah. He says, I'm sorry the secret caused so many problems. I never intended for this to ruin your lives. Um, But then <laughs> Jess says, like, do you think I did the right thing? And Ned's like, no, no, no I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Ned, what the hell? I know, he, make, he makes her apologise to Elizabeth. What yeah. for? <laughs> but Liz thinks, well, now things will just go back to normal. Yeah. But they won't because we're only on chapter seven. No, yeah, I was going to say, there's too much book left for things to go back to normal. The day of the party arrives and Elizabeth is refusing to go. Yeah, she says uh, she's going to stay home and write a book or a story. Yeah, she doesn't want anything to do with Lila. But... Unless it's gone, unless there's a horse involved. <laughs> yeah. It's like the only she time. She said there was going to be a horse at the party. Yeah, yeah. The All the principals coming. would go out the window then. Yep. But um, there's a problem. She's got writer's block. Oh, boy. So she ends up going to the mall with Alice instead to get a card for Mr. Garvin. Yeah, Alice is so desperate for Liz to come to the mall with her. She's like, hey, do you want to come to the mall with me? And Liz is like, no, not no, can't be bothered. And then she's like, oh, we'll just we'll buy a card. For Mr. Garvin, I guess. And she's like, oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's like she's just, Alice is just desperate for company at the mall. <laughs> Poor Alice. She's feeling left out because, you know, she's not in on the secret well, She's either. just working. Imagine if Alice turned against him as well. She's like, you haven't told me the secret either. Never yeah. speak to me again, kids. <laughs> We're getting a divorce until you tell me the language. <laughs> and then we cut to the Fowler's party. It's full of cameras and reporters. Jessica cannot believe how extravagant this is. Mm. Ellen's got Chris Crosby to sign a napkin. Jessica cannot believe the lengths that Lila has gone to to try and make them jealous. <laughs> and uh, Stephen's there. And did you know who he had with him? I didn't. He had stable boy Ted. Ted Rogers. Oh, yes, Ted. Yes, Ted yeah. is in this book. Still, Ted's back. still around. I like um, Ted. And everyone, including Ted, is asking where Liz is. Mm. And of course, Jessica actually decides to lie. And uh, she says, you know, she's feeling sick. And Stephen's like, sick she seemed fine this morning and jess is like shut shut up hmm. so it turns out chris crosby is gonna play a tennis match at this party i'm not gonna ask her again the amazon thing is chris Cos- cosby an actual person or is this made up for the book probably made up probably made up yeah. like johnny buck like the buck yeah yeah um and diana diamond diana um, diamond my favorite that's a good one yeah um so, yeah, he's going to play a tennis match against a local player from the Sweet Valley Tennis Club. Yeah. I don't know why. No, why not? I, I, I was hoping he'd play Bruce Patman. Oh, my God. That would have yeah. been great. Although Bruce is 12 at this point. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that would be a bit weird. I just, like, imagine Lila could have got some revenge there. She could have been like, hey, come over and we'll, you can show off playing some tennis with some people. And then be <laughs> like, oh, here's this world famous tennis <laughs> player. Um, And Lila, Lila tells everybody... Uh, all the kids that they've got their own special section in the bleachers and shouts like it's a VIP section, but it's like no, it's 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 the kids section, Lila. It's, You've all been put into the kids section. It's the kids section, and also it's your house, so <laughs> yeah, I guess you can sit wherever you want, you know. Um, and then it turns out that Jessica's favorite soap star, Brett, couldn't make it to the party. Yeah, she's a little upset about this. Yeah, Lila tells her this news in iThig. Um. And Amy flies off the handle again. Oh, God. She's, well, Amy immediately sees Jess and is like, <clears throat> who invited her yeah. here? And Lila's like, I changed my mind. Yeah. So Amy goes mad, but Lila just is like, look, I'll just tell you how to speak, I think. I, I love does. the, I, I love, yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. I love that Amy, though, thinks like, it's really weird because like Lila is obviously only being friends with Amy to upset Liz and Jess, yeah. right? But Amy thinks like Lila's, 
gonna be a friend like liz is a friend where she's like oh we stick together right and like almost immediately she's now learning lila's like oh, i changed my mind like fuck off amy yeah. do what i want like you know i'm not elizabeth wakefield all the other kids over here um lila telling amy how to yeah. speak i think so they all know now. and they all know now Everybody i was really knows. hoping that chris uh crosby was gonna learn i think as well and start speaking i think crythigus crythig crythigs <laughs> um and um later on an angry amy phones liz up and oh she my. says she said if jessica could tell lila why couldn't you tell me yeah liz offers to tell her the secret <clears throat> but amy's like it's too late your sister told everybody yeah she slams the phone down yeah liz cannot believe it but she thinks you know maybe Maybe she's exaggerating about Jessica telling everyone, you know? Mm. On Tuesday in music class, they've got a substitute teacher called Miss McDonald. Yeah, and Charlie Cashman says, oh, this is great. You know, hopefully, uh, well, before before Miss McDonald turns up, um, Charlie Cashman says, you know, oh, this is great. Hopefully Mr. Garvin's ill and then we won't have to, to mm. do the test. And Liz is like... Charlie Cashman, you're vile for wishing <laughs> illness upon Mr. Garvin. <laughs> you can tell, like, Liz is so... You're vile. Liz... A plague upon your <laughs> A house. A plague upon your house. <laughs> Liz, Liz would be, like, the least popular girl in any school. Like, everyone yeah. would hate her. She's that girl in class. That you're yeah. Like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> But Mr. Garvin is just taking the rest of the year off to spend it with his new baby. Yeah, I'm surprised this even came as a surprise to them. It's like he literally just had a baby. Like, you know. Yeah, so the kids all go wild. wild. They start throwing paper planes around. Miss McDonald wraps her ruler on the desk. Yep. But they just won't listen. No. And then Jim and Charlie Cashman start throwing Lila's bag around. <laughs> Jim Jim throws uh, Lila's bag at Charlie Cashman and Lila just shouts, How dare you, Jim? <laughs> and then and then Miss McDonald tells them off and they talk back to her and I think. And it says her face was red and she looked as if she were about to start crying. This this teacher is like the most thinly skinned. We had a teacher like that in school. Did you? She was a French teacher. Oh, yeah. She used to, to cry in class. Oh, no. Yeah. Do you think that she was actually upset? Or yeah. do you think she was just a master manipulator? No, she was upset. Okay. I remember once this guy called uh, Nick, he, like, our French class had a window yeah. that opened out to, the, to a flat roof. Okay. And Nick went out and started, like, messing around on the roof when she had her back turned right and then he was like waving through the window at the class and then she saw him out there and got so upset she was in tears and then she just locked the window and told him he wasn't allowed to come back in and he's still out there to this day (laughs) (laughs) it's skeletons just on the roof (laughs) Um, yeah so yeah crying teachers yeah so miss mcdonald demands to know what's going on um and and you know lila says you know this is my purse um and the, the teacher asks jim and to liz's shock jim responds in i think mm-hmm. and then we cut to mr bowman's classroom where as per usual elizabeth's hanging around in there for no damn reason yeah, she's just hanging about. And Amy <laughs> Amy comes in looking for Mr. Bowman because she went yeah. to Mr. Bowman's office looking for Mr. Bowman, not just to hang out. Well, you know, they all hang around in there, don't they? They're always in there. Remember that time that Amy was like literally looking at kids' test yeah. results yeah. in the office? And Mr. Bowman's like, you probably shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. And then he left it out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a bit awkward, but um, Elizabeth starts flattering Amy by going yeah, on about she's, how good oh, her article your article was. was so good. Mm. And the flattery works because they make friends. Yeah, she and and you know she does apologize for the way she's been acting, although she does very patronizingly. So she's like, you know, I'm so sorry for the way I acted. I got really silly. I I, I took it. I went over the top. And Liz is like, goes to apologize. Like, I'm sorry too. Uh, but Amy puts her fingers to her lips and she's like, shh, <laughs> and then just keeps talking. It's like how patronizing can you be, Amy? And then they head to the Dairy Burger to celebrate. Yeah. But outside, they bump into Lila, Charlie, and Jim. And they overhear them saying, this will really do her in. (laughs) She's going to learn her lesson the hard way. They have decided to ruin 
Mrs. McDonald's career and destroy <laughs> yeah. her life entirely. Yeah, because she told them off for throwing a bag. Yeah, around. because she told them off for throwing a bag. Um, so Lila calls uh, Amy and Elizabeth over and she says, we've heard a rumour that a district supervisor is coming to the music class next week to review Mrs. McDonald for a permanent job. So they plan to only speak Isig in the class so that she goes crazy and gets fired, basically. Yeah, I mean, great. Uh, Liz and Amy think this is horrible and they say count. I mean, to be fair, it is pretty yeah. horrible. And Lila calls them party poopers. Yeah, oh, you're so boring. So this makes Liz so upset that she heads to her pine tree, of course. She's got to go to the, the thinking tree, mm. of course. And under the tree, she decides that she's going to tell Miss McDonald how to speak Ithig. Yeah, I mean, that will was, ruin the plan. That was the immediate solution to that problem. I don't know why she had to go to a pine tree to figure that one out. <laughs> she can't figure out anything. She she's get out. Out. I can't think unless I go to that tree. <laughs> So, um, yeah. This is the chapter that I summed up in four lines. Yeah, it's pretty short. Chapter nine. So, uh, you know, Liz heads to uh, see Mrs. McDonald. And uh, she says, look, you know, I need to tell you about this Ithig thing. And Mrs. McDonald is like, oh, Ithig. Yeah, I I figured that out the other day. Hmm. Because you kids keep talking it so much that I figured it out by myself. She's cracked the code. She's cracked the the top secret code. Genius. Elizabeth is shocked and impressed. Yeah. Like, it's not fucking Chinese. I like, Liz, <laughs> I, I like that you, uh, a 12-year-old girl, are impressed with this teacher, Liz. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> so the following week, the kids carry out their awful plan in music class. Yes, and the district supervisor is there. Mm. But Miss McDonald shocks them all by speaking I think back. Yeah, and um, they all think to themselves, <clears throat> there must be a snitch. Lila now, is furious. Lila is fuming and she's like, we need to find the snitch. But I love that they're all looking around the classroom trying to find who the snitch is. Liz sat there smugly in the corner, mm. smiling or smiling, a uh, smile across her whole face. It's like, pretty <laughs> obvious who did yeah. this, you know. Um, and then Mrs. McDonald explains to the supervisor that it's a secret language that the kids have, but she can't tell him because it's a secret. Yeah, and all of the kids are really impressed by this. Yeah, They're like, oh, actually, she's along. maybe she's not a bitch and maybe we shouldn't ruin her whole career yeah. in life. After class, Amy and Elizabeth are pleased at how things turned out, but Elizabeth doesn't tell Amy uh, about the fact that about the chat she had with Miss McDonald. But she does kind of tell the truth because Amy's like, <clears throat> did you tell her? And she's like, no, I didn't. Which is true because she did figure it out for herself. Yeah. It's like you can't keep another secret from Amy, Liz. No, She's no. Gonna, she'll explode. She'll she never will... speak to you again. She might murder you. Yeah. I would be fearing for my life from this well, girl. Well, Miss McDonald walks by and winks at Liz and says thanks. And uh, Amy's like, what was that about? And yeah. She's like, like, nothing. Like, oh, we've got a secret winking language, but I can't tell you it. Oh, God. That, that's the sequel to <laughs> this book. That's the sequel to this book. So, after class, Lila is fuming. Yeah. She's like, whoever snitched, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> and uh, everyone's it's, like, look, Mrs. McDonald seems all right. It says her pretty face twisted into an angry scowl. I bet her eyes were flashing. Mm. So she goes up to the supervisor. Yeah, and, he's like, hey, what do you think of your new teacher? And she tells him that Miss McDonald is a boring teacher and she shouldn't be given a job. I love the district. Uh, the district inspector's like, I don't care what you think or what your yeah. music tastes are like go away Tiles little girl stop causing trouble and lila's like you can't talk to me like that <laughs> nobody talks to me like that and then on the way home um elizabeth and amy pass mary's house mary robinson and they hear a noise oh my god yeah so it's mary robinson formerly known as mary giaccio yes if you remember correctly so she um they kind of rush to her house because they think she's like being attacked or something yeah But she runs out crying um, and then starts laughing hysterically. Yeah. She invites the girls in and she tells them that her mother's boyfriend, Tim, has proposed. They're going to be a real family, finally. Yeah. So she was adopted. She didn't know her real mother. Her mother's now come come back in the book we read. Uh, But she's never had a a, a proper family, a full family before. Now she's got a full, she's going to have a full family. And Liz and Amy are going to be invited to the wedding. Oh, my God. Mrs. Robinson asks them to keep quiet until the invitations have been sent out there. Oh, no. Don't. At least Amy's in on this yeah. secret. Oh, my God. So Liz does keep quiet all week. She even keeps it from Jessica. Yeah. 
But then uh, when the invites arrive, it was bloody quick, wasn't it? It was pretty quick. It's like, can you keep the secret until yeah. tomorrow? But it turns out Mary had already told Jessica anyway. Yeah, she's basically... And Jessica had managed to keep quiet as well. Yeah, she. well, I guess Jessica's learned that you must keep secrets at all costs. Yeah. Um, which I think is she should. people should have learned, no, you shouldn't keep secrets no. that are stupid and pointless. Especially not between your family. Yeah. Maybe just tell them. Um, but Ned's really excited and he starts talking about the wedding in Ithig. It's like, get over it, Ned. Like, yeah, the, uh, and the girls even say, like, the twins are even like, they're like, we're, 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 done, done, with, we're done with Ithig. We're and, never mentioning this language again. And Ned's like, no, in the in the memory of Billy Fontana, I will forever <laughs> speak. I don't know why I've decided that Billy Fontana's dead, but in my head, it's like, <laughs> it's in his memory that he speaks Ithig forever. And then it says, is there yet another surprise in store for Mary's friends? Find out in Stretching the Truth. Book number 13. Well, we will find out. I wonder what the surprise can be, though. Cause I, I actually you know, don't know. Yeah, I, I'm genuinely curious. But although, I just see someone say this book's a good one. Although so. dangerously, I was really curious about this secret. And now I've discovered what this secret is. Yeah. I'm a little concerned that don't, this, don't this, build this, it up. the shock next time might not be such a shock. Don't get your hopes up. So obviously our last our last uh, Casey's episode was Lila's Secret Valentine. Yes, Best book of all time. Uh, it was amazing. It's my favourite twins book so yeah. far. The comments we had. Um, Sarah Mosby says, Todd is so creepy in this book. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. Fucking you're absolutely right. In this book. And she doesn't think we ever hear from Justin Pratt again. Aww. I'm really sad about that. She also sent us a fab picture of a tapestry vest. That is... As Justin wore to the dance. That's something. That is quite something. We'll post that one up as well, actually. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> and, um, yeah, Sarah's Reed said her favourite part of the episode was when you said, he's not a twit, he's a prat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> and uh, Walter Ware told us that um, Lifeguard Centre was just knock-off Baywatch. Oh, but it sounds like the best kind of knock-off. You know, sometimes you want the, the cheap, crappy knockoff of a show. Yeah. It sounds pretty entertaining. Claire PH says, dog kicker Dennis. <laughs> She's realised that Rich can't let go of anybody called Dennis. <laughs> i never got... What? Oh! Uh, Dennis Creighton. Dennis Brooke Creighton. Dennis. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fair enough. Um, And uh, Jodie Char said, uh, Justin and Lila are the prat and the brat. Oh, nice. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was about it for this week, I think. Yes, uh, a, sh- a short episode, but a very short book, especially when you read it. Because it's about the same length as a normal twins book, but very little happens. Yeah, um, we should have done the whole episode in, I think. <laughs> that would have taken a lot longer. <laughs> that would have taken the day. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with... Kelly's too much in love Kelly's too much in love and of course we'll be back with Casey's in two weeks time and we're going to find out what Mary's surprise secret is yeah we've also got an announcement for Kelly's next week as well Ooh, tune in for that one yeah so thanks for listening and we'll see you next week catch you then bye